to live at Kigali and this is on the sidelines of the Kigali Global Dialogue 2022 and this evening I have a very special guest, President Mohammad Nasheed, uh, the Speaker of the Parliament of Maldives and of course the President of the country previously, a great uh, friend of ORF and of India and someone who engages with global matters with, uh, with the keenness of a of an academic, scholar, thinker, and of course a public figure. And uh, President Nasheed, let me welcome you to the dialogue. Well, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sharon, and it's a great pleasure uh, to be in Kigali again, uh, taking part in the ORF uh, Kigali Dialogue, Global Dialogue. It's a pleasure, and thank you very much. President Nasheed, three years ago, you and I were sitting in this room, and um, I remember you telling me, uh, of course, we can say it was prophetic, uh, you had mentioned uh, the challenges that Maldives was facing simply because of the debt trap it had found itself in vis-a-vis uh, -vis China and its investments. Uh, we are now beginning to see that play out in different parts of the uh, uh, continent, in India's neighborhood. Sri Lanka is the latest victim. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you yesterday mentioned that the, that the debt trap is preventing countries from responding to climate change. Now, I want you to explain to our viewers what do you mean when you say that debt trap is limiting climate response? We in the Maldives, for instance, and if you have a look at it, uh, more than 58 countries are in this situation. We are paying over uh, 25 to 30 percent of our revenue for debt reservicing. Mm -hmm. And then again, we have to pay another 30 percent for adaptation for climate change. Mm -hmm. In the case of the Maldives, it might be water breakers, mm -hmm. revetments, and so on. But all over these climate vulnerable 58 countries, we are paying over 50% of our budget on debt and then climate adaptation. So after civil service pay, maintenance, fuel, medicine, we actually don't have any more money for any development work or any climate change adaptation work, transition work, or even to actually look after ourselves. Uh, this is, we are on the brink, you can now have a look at Sri Lanka. If you have a look at these countries who are in debt distress, I'm sure you will see that the price of the project mm -hmm. or the debt value is far more than the asset value. Mm. Have a look at a bridge, mm. have a look at a road, count and tell us how much is actually its worth. Mm -hmm. Is that equal to the debt? No. When the asset value is far less than the debt, it's of course impossible to pay the debt from that asset. No, but then why is it that countries such as the Maldives and Sri Lanka find this an attractive proposition? Well. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had China who was offering all this money uh, and we had leaders who were willing to, to uh, accept take that money. That. Now, the first was an attempt to change state type. Mm -hmm. In the case of the Maldives, large amounts of funds were put into our parliament mm -hmm. during President Yamin's time. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you again have a look at how this debt was created, you would see that there was a lot of corruption, uh, transparency was completely lacking, democracy was falling apart, dictatorship was what it was going into. Mm -hmm. So it was possible to create the debt. Uh, we've, but, um, but very, very fortunately... So, so the wrong incentives were given for countries to make these bad decisions? <laughs> Certainly the wrong incentives were given and also um, uh, uh, the countries found it attractive that large infrastructure projects, uh, concrete projects, steel... Also I helped in their political messaging. Also helped in their political messaging, mm. saying that these are development. Now, uh, uh, these leaders started equating development to concrete. Mm. And, and concrete meant development. Uh, but concrete also meant debt. Uh, the concrete also meant heavy, and, heavy, and, heavy and debt. of course, surrendering sovereignty eventually. And once you can't pay the loan, they ask for the equity of the project. Mm. Now, it might be a port, it might be a road, it might be a bridge. It might even be a hospital. Mm. But if you can't pay the debt, the creditor, the lender, is asking for equity. Mm. Now, with equity, you lose 
sovereignty. And especially if it is a critical infrastructure project. Well, yes, strategic infrastructure. Correct. Strategic infra. None of these infra infra infrastructures are actually so much so relevant to civilians. the civilians in the hinterland. Mm. So, so President Noshid, okay, uh, we understand. And I think uh, you have said, uh, you have mentioned this earlier, you have said uh, that uh, this needs to change. Now, my question is, how do we change it? Uh, is there another game in town? Are there any other sources of funds that you yourself need for infrastructure oh. and for responding mm. to climate challenges? Dr. Sharan, we must be the game in town, mm. not anyone else. Mm. We are in distress, and if we try to take another loan to pay back the previous loan, we would never get out of this situation. Mm. Uh, 58 vulnerable countries in total have to pay trillions of dollars back every year to creditor countries. And if we continue to go on like this, it would be impossible. Mm. We have to seriously restructure our debt. Mm. And in this restructuring, a debt swap to environment mm. is very important. Mm. Now, uh, uh, we know the benefits of a carbon sink. Correct. We know the benefits of looking after a reef. We know the benefits of environmental protection. It, there is an economic benefit. Correct. And you can quantify that. Mm. Now, can you swap that to your debt? Mm. We didn't emit all this carbon. We are paying 30% of our revenue for adaptation. In fact, you are, you are struggling because of climate change. Because of climate change. Mm. And then on top of the climate change, now we have uh, the debt issue. So it's extremely unfair that climate vulnerable countries, debt-ridden countries, have to go on about this and face this situation every day. Now, very soon, IMF would have to step into Sri Lanka, for instance. Now, an IMF program basically means austerity. Correct. It basically means cutting, reduction, reduce civil service, reduce uh, uh, spending. All, spending, everything. Cut, 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 and cut. And when you do that, you have a population, you have a community, you have that people suffers. that you had been elected to look after. So mm. you can't cut everything out mm. and then still have normal country, normal society. We are in a very precarious situation and we have to address this situation. So uh, I think that idea is fascinating and I'll come back to uh, the debt to environment swap that you were mentioning and I'll come and I'll ask you to elaborate on that but let me uh, ask you a question before that how hopeful or rather how optimistic are you that projects such as uh, or initiatives such as the global gateway or the build back better world or the new determination in USAID to be more active or AFD France to be more active uh, you have worked with Europeans in, in UK and US uh, for a very very long time how optimistic are you that such initiatives can actually provide a viable alternative? Uh, uh, very sorry to say. Um, now, look, Sri Lanka is in distress. Mm -hmm. Who has given anything? Only India. Mm. No one else has done anything. And uh, we will soon, very soon, oh, well, hopefully not, fingers crossed, other countries go into the same situation, other countries in South Asia. Mm. And... Uh, you know, India would be the only country who would step in and who would assist you in the first instance. Mm -hmm. We need uh, uh, a mechanism mm. uh, from the Western countries to assist India in this work. Mm. It's very important mm. that India is not left alone mm. to do all it this it work. will not be able to be on uh, the point. Well, it, it, well, of course it can't. Well, but, you know, other countries must assist India in mm -hmm. this work. Mm -hmm. We need a fund. Uh, we need, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, and, and very, very encouragingly, India is going to be chairing the G20 this year. And I hope that this issue will be addressed in the G20. And I hope that India will have assistance from other European countries, Western countries, uh, with bigger GDPs and, and better means uh, to see that all our countries can survive. Uh, uh, President Nasheed, you are someone who has really believed in the power of uh, the collective. 
working together. You mobilized uh, collectives for climate, you mobilized the oceans community. My question to you is that, uh, do you think it would be now prudent and important to create a crisis fund for the region? Very important, Dr. Shalini. Very, 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 very important. Um, this is, in fact, uh, 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 an execution plan mm -hmm. for what we are suggesting. Uh, this is the work plan. And the work plan must involve a fund or a bank or some such financial institution that can easily, quickly disperse funds. Quickly disperse To prevent cr cr the currency overruns or uh, to prevent uh, debt overruns. Debt etc. overruns and all sorts of other climate impact induced uh, uh, crises crisis that we are all facing. Hmm. So I it's always important to address these issues quickly. Hmm. When you, when you, if you spend five dollars today, you can save. You lots. can save fifty dollars tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So timing is so very important. India understands this, and uh, uh, it is very important that we have a fund that could address the emergency, and the emergency is happening now. Uh, President Nasheed, I want to go back to what you mentioned a little earlier, and that seems to me to be your new passion project. How do you price? the ocean heritage, mm. the reefs you mentioned, and for its protection, uh, be able to monetize mm. um, the government's determination mm. uh, to preserve it. Mm. How re receptive do you think the world is going to be? I mean, we have seen uh, projects around forestation, for example, you know, keeping the trees intact, yeah, yeah. and you can monetize yeah, that. Yeah. How receptive or how soon do you think the blue economy, that which is becoming a buzzword today, mm -hmm. is going to compel countries to assess mm -hmm. the importance of ocean mm -hmm. heritage, price it, mm -hmm. and be able to therefore uh, allow funds to flow to mm -hmm. countries such as yours, mm -hmm. who are the custodians of the oceans, mm -hmm. um, and, and enable you to not only spend some of it on adaptation, mm -hmm. but actually some of it also on building resilient infrastructure mm -hmm. for your people? Well, you know, uh, very often we are referred to as small states, but in fact we are big, big ocean oceans. states. Yeah. The Maldives is 1,000 kilometers from north to south, 600 kilometers from east to west. Now the question is, how much is a square meter of a reef? We don't know. How? how what is the value of a reef? Of preserving it. Oh, was preserving it or destroying it? Hmm. Now we build a harbor by destroying a reef. Hmm. A harbor would cost us $3 million, $4 million to build. Now, of course, for development effort, we then think that this reef is not worth $3 million. Hmm. So, but of course, that is not its actual real worth. Our whole livelihood is based on that. The fisheries. The fishing industry is based on that. Hmm. The tourism industry is based on that. So the life cycle is, so, you know, our GDP, the asset value of the Maldives is the natural resources that we have. Mm -hmm. And if we can't quantify that, it's going to be difficult to preserve that. Mm -hmm. If you can't quantify the value in dollars or in, in some currency, mm -hmm. uh, the cost, the asset value of a reef, it's going to be impossible to protect it. So it's very important, I think, that we start uh, uh, more arithmetic and more mathematics into this, mm -hmm. more economics into it, more accountancy into it, and quickly find out what is the price of it. Uh, Dr. Shannon, you said, how receptive do I think others would be on that? Um, I'm banking on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think we all have to bank on each other, but, but I think this is a good note to actually close this conversation. Uh, you have um, suggested to us this afternoon that we should actually bring together the finest minds uh, to discuss this issue, uh, to try and uh, discover yeah. uh, uh, the importance and price of uh, uh, these ocean heritage uh, 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 reefs uh, and, and if they can in some sense uh, be preserved and serve the people. Well, uh, if, if you may, if you will have love, I'm, uh, we are trying to, the Maldives Coral Institute is trying to have a coral festival in the Maldives, mm -hmm. basically focusing on, on debt to environment swap. 
how that can happen, how to quantify the value of the reefs, and how we may be able to swap that value to our debt. So, uh, uh, thank you very much. No, uh, I think I, I, I think it's a great it's a great festival to actually celebrate uh, because hopefully uh, this will help in taking the cause of both the people and the planet further. Uh, President Noshi, thank you for joining us, and I assure you that we will be with you uh, at the Coral Festival. Hopefully, partner with you in, in making it happen. And uh, like you said, uh, big ocean countries have a big opportunity uh, to make big impact. On, the huma on humanity's battle against uh, some of the effects that we are currently facing uh, due to uh, emissions and climate change. And thank you once again for joining us in Kigali, and hopefully we will continue to host you at ORF time and again. Thank you so very much. Thank you.